Hey, how's it going everybody? Lewis here. And I wanted to come to you today and make a video about the Apollo 7700 series atomizer spray gun. I get a lot of questions about this gun and how it works, how it's made. So I figure there's no better way to do it than come on here and make this video for you. Um, so what we have here is the actual gun body itself. If you buy the gun by itself, this is what you're going to receive with a 1.0 needle and nozzle size. And what that's referring to is the actual needle that runs all the way through the gun and the nozzle that's here at the end. Now you'll also get the B gold air cap with that gun. And there are other options available as well for different coatings. So let's jump into the gun. With this gun, you have three adjustment points. You have your material adjustment, which is going to allow the materials to flow through the gun. And this is going to determine how much material come in, comes out of the gun. So the further in we have it, the least amount of material. And as we back it out, we're going to get more material coming through the gun. At the top of that, we have our air adjustment. This is going to allow you to adjust the amount of air that is fedding, being fed through the front of the gun at the air cap. So it's really handy to have that. A lot of turbine HVLP guns don't have that option available on the gun. Um, we also have our fan control at the front. So that's a simple twist. And this is going to allow you to make your fan pattern larger or smaller. Um, so what you'll notice is that you have the option to run a bottom cup or a siphon fed cup as we call it, or a top cup, a gravity fed cup. The gun is very versatile, very well built. What you'll notice about this gun is that it's built just like an automotive HVLP gun and it operates very, very similarly. Um, so with this gun, I've been able to basically apply any type of coating that I've tried to run through it. Uh, I pair it with the Apollo Precision 5 um, turbine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so what I wanna do with y'all today is actually run some paint through it and show you what to look for when you're setting up your spray gun. So give me a second, I'm gonna get set up and we'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have my paint loaded in the gun and what I've chosen for this product is the Bin Shellac Base Primer. The reason I chose this product is because I get a lot of questions about it. I don't personally use it a lot, but I know a lot of the end users do so I figured I'd do a video with the Ben Shellac primer and I'm actually going to spray a door right after this to show you proper spray techniques. So I have the gun loaded and the first thing that I want to do before I even start spraying, I want to have my air all the way open. Okay. And I have my turbine set at half speed. So on the precision five, it's right at half. I want to see where I'm at. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have my material all the way in, closed completely. I don't want any material coming out of this gun at all. All right. And the reason that I'm doing that is I'm going to slowly back it off to see when I get that perfect spray pattern. So when I turn the turbine on and I put my respirator on, what you're going to notice is that I'm going to slowly back that off. All right. So let's get started.
All right, guys, so what I want you to take a look at here is the actual spray pattern. What you're going to notice is where I actually back the needle up. I have a really nice, even, consistent spray pattern um, here. Now, where I widened out and I just allowed a lot of material to come through, you can see a lot of heavy droplets around the edges. Now, what that means is it means that the material is not atomizing properly. So if you're seeing heavy, heavy droplets around there or a real heavy center, then you know that you have some adjusting to do. And typically what you want to do is minimize the amount of material coming out of the gun. All right, guys, so notice what I did here as well is I actually dialed that gun all the way into almost an airbrush pattern. And you can see how fine we got it and how much control you can actually have over this gun. I made a few lines to outline my spray pattern. I kind of shaded it in a little bit just to show you how diverse uh, this gun really can be. So, um, you know, anything that you're you're trying to do whether it's toning, shading, uh, some type of hobby, uh, you can have all the confidence in the world that we can adjust and dial this gun in as fine as you want to. Okay, now we have a first coat on this door. Now what you're gonna notice is you didn't see me gun waving a whole lot or anything like that. We wanna keep that spray gun really nice and even and consistent across the panel. You don't want to try to angle that spray gun into these corners and shoot all of that. If you're worried about light spots, after you do multiple coats, those will start to go away. What's gonna happen when you start to tilt that gun, every gun has that long elliptical pattern. So as, as you can imagine, if you're tilting that pattern, you're gonna have more material uh, wherever you're tilting that gun. So we wanna try to avoid getting into all of these little details because then we're just gonna have a bunch of uneven paint on the panel. So do your best to try to avoid tilting the gun. We wanna have it spaced about six inches. It depends on the coating but uh, anywhere from six inches to eight inches away from the panel and keep a nice, even, consistent speed while you're spraying. So uh, anyways, I hope this has helped you. Uh, all of the Apollo spray equipment is available at www.learntofinish.com. That's learn the number two finish Dot com. I've been in this business a long time, guys. I'm here to help you. Um, if I can earn your business, that'd be awesome. You'll always have a direct line to me for support when you're out in the field. I promise you I can answer those questions for you. So again, I hope this helped. Everybody have a great week.